Greetings and salutation guys, how are you doing? It's been a minute. Now in my previous video I talked about the second dragon war and the scattering of the good dragons, so let's hit the intro and start with the third dragon war. <laughs> The Third Dragon War, the most well-documented and legendary war in Krennish history, the War of Huma Dragonbane and his Silver Dragon Heart, began with the awakening of Deathfriar from his millennia-long slumber and the subsequent seeding of chromatic dragon eggs around the continent. This plan was itself centuries in the making, but the end result was a new generation of powerful worms under the guidance of Deathfriar and Takesis, and many of Takesis's own mortal captains, such as the Org King Garrick Drakan, Garrick's Orgs, a cabal of renegade mages led by Galen Dracos, and a horde of Bakali goblins and evil humans gathered in the east and struck west and south to engage the Knights of Solomnia and the Elves, the Dragons of Light, who had established such a strong connection with the mortal races, rose with them to oppose the Dark Queen's armies, and war was waged across the face of the dragons themselves refer to this as the human war, for so much of it was waged between human armies. For the first time, the dragons served as mounts for humans and org warriors and were not the focus of the war. Huma brought the powerful dragon lances to the battlefield, as many legends recount, and many other forms of warfare first arose in this period. But for the dragons, the greatest hero of the conflict was Hart, a silver dragon who had fallen in love with Huma and bore him into his final battle against Akesis. Huma's battle with the Queen of Darkness's terrible five-headed dragon aspect is subject to many bard tales, numerous conflicting poems and balladas, but the truth remains that the knight exacted the oath of finality from the goddess and then succumbed to his grievous wounds. Bound by such a potent oath, Takesis was forced to withdraw her power from Kryn and with it her dragons. Many of them accompanied her back to the abyss, while a small number went into deep hibernation in the Carolus Mountains and other enclaves. The concession that was made in the pledging oath that also bound the good dragons, who departed to the dragon islands in lawful exile. Neither they nor their chromatic cousins would be seen on Kryn again for over 1200 years, and in their absence the mortal races rose to fully embrace their destiny as the children of the stars. And and with that, we are going to finish this video today. Yes, I know it is a short one, and I hope to see you soon with the next video. Have a great day.